change of weather this morning. Overnight rain, a damp and greasy track. What's going to happen in our second Endurance Financial RGB Sports 1000 Championship race here at Silverstone? Well, it's Paul Smith and Christopher Wesmail on row one, ahead of Billy Olbone, who needs a good finish in this one from third on the grid, with Daniel Lana fourth, and it's Colin Chapman and Tim Hoverd looking to uh, resume their race one battle that saw Hoverd come home just ahead in fourth position. Well, that non-finish for Billy Olbone in race number one has blown the championship wide open. He really needs to try and score some good points and uh, undo the damage against Paul Smith, our race one winner. The red lights go on. They will go out now. We're away in racing. The drier side of the road, remember, is the outside line, but the fastest start coming from the inside of row number one. Christopher Wesemail leads down towards turn number one. Paul Smith down to second place. Billy Olbone appears to be in third, is he? Or third-ish, side by side there with the other Mattel. That will be of Daniel Lana. But Olbone does go through in third position, so he uh, at least has gained a position based on where he was at the start of race number one, where he dropped behind all three Mattels. Now, though, he's right on the tail of the championship leader, or his championship rival, I should say. Uh, Paul Smith, their second and third as they run down towards the right-hander onto the hangar straight. We're on board with Colin Chapman, white car in fifth position. Out onto the straight they go, and can the spire of Olbone hang on? Oh, he slows it. Oh, Billy Olbone slowing again. I don't believe it. Billy Olbone with mechanical dramas on the first lap of race number two, and that could be absolutely pivotal in the championship race because yet again, when he had a chance to go and challenge Paul Smith, it's all gone wrong for Billy, and surely that car is heading into the pit lane to retirement, or certainly a lengthy pit visit to try and figure out what the problem is. Now, whether or not it's a return of the issue that put him out of race one, we saw him have a spin, but then he rejoined from that spin and came into the pit lane to retire with a mechanical drama. So uh, whether that was cause or effect of the spin, we know not, but it looks as though something has derailed Billy Olbone's challenge in race two as well. So Christopher Wesemail now leads the way. Christopher, remember, he's looking for his first ever victory in the RGB Sports 1000 Championship. Rob Ward with Colin Chapman here in fourth position. He is now the best of the non Mattels is uh, Colin Chapman in his Spire GT3. Works his way towards Village, and uh, well, it is Wesmail that leads the way. It is Paul Smith in second position, and Daniel Lana in third, and Smith. If he can catch Wesemail, and remember in race one, he definitely had the pace to uh, pull away from Christopher Wesemail behind, so there's no reason to suspect that he won't be able to catch him again in race two. Although, look at the gap that the race leader's got, actually. That's almost half of the length of the hangar straight between first and second, and we're not even at the end of lap number two. Christopher Wesemail with a demon start from the damp side of the road. You really would not have bet on Wesemail leading into turn number one, but he's just got on with it here. Obviously got lots of confidence in the car on cold tyres, and he's pulled a big old gap now over over Paul Smith in second, Lana third, Chapman fourth, uh, and no sign of Tim Hoverd yet in Chapman's mirrors. The yellow car is uh, several positions back, you can see him in the background. Instead, it's James Walker applying the pressure now. So James is in fifth position, having started ninth, so the number 20 car, having a really, really good start to the race. It's another one of the Spires. He's had a good exit from Club Corner there. He's challenging Chapman, I believe, down towards Abbey Corner to overtake here is a pretty difficult pass to make at the best of times, especially when the inside line is by far the damper side of the road. The racing line is dry, if, if not all that grippy, because all of the rubber that was laid down yesterday has been washed away overnight. But offline, it's very damp and greasy indeed. As Paul Smith actually doesn't seem particularly comfortable in this race, does he? He's in second place at the moment, but the runaway winner from yesterday's first race is starting to come under pressure now from his teammate Daniel Lada behind. Then it's uh, the Chapman car in fourth. Then it's the 20 car of James Walker next in line in fifth. And I believe Mark Betts is the black car uh, number 44 in sixth. So a five car train here for second place. And Daniel Lana is definitely closing in on Paul Smith. Now, this is not what Smith needs. There won't be any team orders here amongst the Mattels, that's for sure. So uh, Daniel Lana is well in title to challenge for this second position. But Paul really needs to maximise the opportunity now with Billy Olbone out again. And we can confirm he came into the pits to retire. Uh, after the end of the opening lap, so he's not even completed one lap yet. Uh, with him out of the race, a double retirement, then a double race victory for Paul Smith would be really, really good for his championship hopes, or at least to win in a second place, but that's not looking particularly likely, because out of club corner, Dan La Daniel Lana is quicker than him, gets up the inside line towards Abbey, and goes through. So Daniel Lana, or, or does he, <laughs> fighting back on the outside is Paul Smith. That will mean that he's on the left-hand side through farm, the outside line there for the village. Colin Chapman's got a, a grandstand view of this as they run wheel to wheel into the turn. But no, through will go Daniel Lana. And Paul Smith just does not seem to have the pace in race two for some reason that he had in race one. Haven't seen him have any contact or run off the track. He didn't get a great start, but that was 
uh, not really didn't have a great start in race one, of course. He didn't lead in turn one for the first race either. He was then able to work his way through into the lead fairly quickly. This time around, though, he's dropping down the order. He's into third, and the queue of cars behind is getting ever bigger because Danny Andrew is also closing in now. The red number 27 car in the background started from the back in race one uh, and was working his way up the top ten before he pulled into the pit lane with another retirement. Well, Danny Andrew this time around looking to try and reach the end of the race. And if he does so, he may well be in a top five position because he's right with this group of cards. In fact, he goes up the inside of Mark Betts in the background. So Danny Andrew, forget a top five, a podium finish could be on the cards here. Through Bale and Clubby goes. There's Colin Chapman, the 63 car coming through. And Daniel Lana getting away from Paul Smith now. So maybe Paul took a gamble on setup because obviously a lot of the drivers will have been expecting the circuit to be a bit wetter than this maybe so uh, possibly he's taken a gamble on the setup but it's gone the wrong way Mark Betts oh uh, that's uh, that's the 20 car of James Walker who's gone around I wonder why Mark Betts suddenly slowed through the corners because James Walker had lost it in front of him and that's just split this pack up slightly now so Danny Andrew and Mark Betts lose a bit of ground the number two car is David Watson that is not Billy Olver it's Billy's teammate in the Spire but um, the other silver and orange car still running well though inside the top 10 then it's Tim Hovard who's not running as well as he did in race one and nor actually is the 34 car of Stephen Dean we saw them both running a bit further up the order than they're, they're in the race one than they are now Paul Smith in third Colin Chapman in fourth position and well looks the quicker of the two at this stage you'd have to say Colin is third in the championship remember Paul Smith is second in the championship so there is um, a score to be settled here between these two James Walker is the man who's fourth in the points, which tells us that the number 20, 20 car should really be running further up the order than it is now, but that spin has uh, well and truly dropped him down the order. So quite a few of the heavy hitters in the championship, in fact all of them really in their own way, having struggles in this race, with the exception maybe of Colin Chapman, who looks as though he could be about to challenge for a podium finish here. Out of Abbey they go. The slipstream of Paul Smith, whose car just looks like he's way wayward, doesn't it? He's Sliding a bit from the rear, I think maybe he has gone for a slightly softer, wet setup, and that's maybe just hurting the performance now in one of our by and large dry conditions. Right after he goes back onto the back straight again, he gets a good turn in, but it's just scrabbling for grip, I think, on the exit of the corner. So the previous chap will get underneath the circuit access bridge halfway down the hangar straight. Daniel Lana continuing just to eke out a bit of a margin now over Smith, second, third, and fourth in shot here. And then behind, it looked as though David Watson was trying to make a move on, I think, Mark Betts, that was, for what would be seventh position. Did he make that one stick? Yes, I think he did. So, Watson, uh, David Watson moving up the order nicely. In fact, he's already on the tail of uh, Danny Andrew. That will be... Oh, Danny Andrew, look at that. Uh, the rear bodywork suddenly snapped loose. Look at the, the left rear corner on Mattel as it comes through here. He's sliding around all over the place. Watson is also sideways, and therefore, Mark Betts gets up the inside. But there was definite damage done to the rear left corner. And there you can see it rubbing on the tyre. So, unfortunately, Danny Andrew looks like he's in for maybe another pit lane visit this time and possibly retirement if they can't get the bodywork attached. In fact, it's crap isn't it? So there's something broken at the rear left corner as he maybe hit a curb. I didn't see any contact with the other car, but uh, Danny Andrew, unfortunately, luckless this weekend. He's been one of the fastest cars on the track, but just hasn't been able to get the results out of it that he really deserves. So uh, that's a shame for Danny. He is therefore looking like he's out of this race. A double non-finish for him, a double non-finish for Billy Olbone. It seems that having speed here at Silverstone is far from a guarantee of good results because you've got to get to the finish of the race to score any points at all. Well, down the back straight they will go again. About half race distance being approached now in this a longer second race. This is a, um, a 25 minute race for the RGB Sports 1000s, sponsored by Endurance Financial. So the drivers have a bit longer to sink their teeth into this race. Brings with it an extra few challenges and an extra few hurdles to uh, cross because you've got to think about tyre management and. Uh, setting the car up to work well over a longer stint rather than just being struck a quick 15 minute dash as they had in race one or with Colin Spicer here car pulling into the pit lane in front of us was that Danny Andrew again I think it was that black number 27 car so Spicer will see that know that he's about to gain another place but it's probably the last place that he's likely to gain anytime soon because there are no other cars anywhere near us on the road we'll have to pit straight we'll see exactly how close we are to anybody else but I think the the length of the pit straight is empty, so Colin Spicer set for a fairly lonely second half of this race, it would seem. With a few drivers dropping by the wayside, 
no surprise that a few of them are finding themselves in cleaner air than they maybe anticipated. Uh, this is Stephen Dean, the number 34 car, who in race one uh, was, uh, he came home in 10th position. He's running in much the same sort of position now. Mark Betts there, the 44 car, has lost a place now to David Watson, as we saw before. He tried to fight back initially, wasn't able to do it. Of course, they've both now got themselves ahead of the luckless Danny Andrew. This is the fight for third position. Paul Smith and Colin Chapman still right with him. Smith, it is possible with this being a longer race, maybe, again, the setup being maybe the reason for Paul Smith's sort of lack of pace, maybe he set his car up to one stronger as the race goes on, because he certainly seems to be a bit more comfortable now in third place. He's not able to go after the second place man, Christopher, uh, excuse me, uh, Daniel Lana. He's has pulled that gap and continues to extend. In fact, just as I said, the ball is looking quite comfortable. He has to drive defensively into Village to try and keep Colin Chapman at bay. Colin takes it out of his right hander at Chapman. Looks the apex nice, but then you see the from underneath him as he comes out of the corner. Just hurts your speed all the way down the next straight and into the breaking zone at uh, Stowe's. So Chapman able to stay with him in the slipstream. I don't think Chapman's car is naturally quite as quick in a straight line as Paul, as, uh, Paul Smith's is, but Paul making these little mistakes, and that's what's, uh, that's what's doing the damage. Down the hill they go. You can see just how steep a hill that is down in towards Vale. Chapman not really close enough to really attack, though, so it's going to take a mistake, I think, out of Paul Smith to open the door here for the 63 car to go through. Between the left, through the right. Oh, and Smith again there. You see the rear of the car sliding around under acceleration. Eventually, it's going to snap out too far, you would have to imagine, and he'll really have to jump out of the throttle. And, allow, and that could allow Chapman to come through. They've been, both been caught there at the moment by uh, David Watson. So David Watson in the spire behind them. He's running really well at the moment. If these two start squabbling in any harder, then we'll be right with them in a flash. Again, of course, with defence the inside into Ward Village. They're closing in. Uh, so Daniel didn't have a great lap that time around. Paul Smith could very much do with getting a car between himself and Colin Chapman because Colin is starting to uh, become an ever bigger threat to the uh, championship contender here, in this race at least. Of course, Colin, as I mentioned, third in the championship too, so scoring decent points as the year has gone on. Down into the braking zone. Wonderful sound these cars make as they make their way at very high speed around the ever more dry appearing Silverstone International Circuit. It's back mark in front of them now. I think it's about to go a lap down, so they'll have to try and uh, negotiate that car as quickly as possible. I think that might just, that might well be uh, Drew Faulkner in the, uh, the contour, the only contour on the grid. Now to the club they go, though, and look at the way that uh, David Watson has now latched right onto the gearbox of Colin Chapman. Now, this is taking the pressure off Paul Smith, but for how much longer? Because if Watson goes through, which he can't quite do in Abbey, but he tried to. If Watson gets past Chapman, then he looks like he's got the pace to pass the whole group here, really, doesn't he? Lana slithers a bit wide there as he dives up the inside of the back marker, which goes even wider to stay out of their way. And does a good job, actually, of not impeding the progress of our front runners here. This is all starting to get quite entertaining now for third place, certainly, and arguably for second place, because Dan Lana is not a million miles up the road. But Paul Smith, as he's been defending again from Chapman, has started to fall further away. Chapman, in turn, though, has lots and lots of company here from David Watson, who goes on the inside line at Stowe and makes that look very easy. So through goes David Watson. He's up another place and immediately latches onto the tail of Paul Smith. So Watson, who is Billy Olmo's teammate, remember, could do his teammate a lot of favours here find a way past Paul Smith and uh, take a few more points away from Volvo's championship rival. It's, again, damage limitation for Billy, really. He's not going to score any points himself this weekend. The best thing that can happen is that Paul Smith's points haul is limited, and it looks like that's going to happen because there's nothing stopping David Watson here. He gets the inside of Smith down towards Amy Corner. He carries a bit more speed into the corner. You saw his brake lights flashed on later. Through he goes, and with Smith now out on the dirty side of the road, he loses momentum. And Colin Chapman is able to close in and might be able to challenge down towards Village. He has a look to the inside line. He's later on the brakes, but Paul Smith is always going to turn in across him. And uh, to avoid contact, Chapman had to back out. Through the left-hander they go again, back down towards the uh, right at Chapel. And, uh, well, David Watson on the podium now. Could he get second place away from Daniel Larney? He wouldn't bet against it. 
He's closing in, look, and uh, this, again, goes back to what I said earlier on, that you've got to set your car up to be strong through the second half of the race, as well as the first. These cars run on a, a semi-slick tyre, so almost like a track day tyre, really, so tyre wear will be a factor. The Silverstone circuit quite hard on tyres because it's quite uh, high speed, of course, although it has been freshly resurfaced this year. Um, but uh, the, so the grip levels are up, but over a full 25 minutes these cars do work the tyres particularly the rear tyres because they are so powerful they're 1000 cc motorbike engines producing an awful lot of horsepower and um, that means that they the rear tyres really are giving the work over so if you set your car up a bit too aggressively in the first half of the race it could come back to bite you later on whereas on the other hand david watson is just getting quicker and quicker as the race goes on he's with daniel lana now as colin chapman is going up the inside of paul smith this is even more significant because paul smith is going to lose some more points now chapman up the inside line that was a really committed move and he makes it work they're side by side still in front of him as well but uh, david watson can't quite prize the door open and take second place away from daniel lana oh he gets very sideways at the corner which his teammate spun in race one and uh, watson did a good job to save that one that could have gone very badly wrong indeed Daniel Lana really having to drive defensively now hugs the white line for the first half of the hangar straight before pulling away in a straight line the Mattels do seem a fraction quicker in a straight line but maybe that slightly lower drag lower downforce setting that they've got is hurting the tyres because the car is moving around more through the corner what's definitely the quicker of the two at this stage of the race down into the braking zone at Vale again right in behind Daniel Lana and loses a bit of downforce himself as a result the closer you get to the car in front the more the turbulent air affects the the grip levels of your car and uh, David Watson finding that out there as he came in towards Vail but he's much quicker out of club corner Lana goes to the middle of the road to the fend Watson goes to the outside surely he won't try and go right around the outside of Abbey corner that's exactly what he's going to try and do that gives him the inside line for the left hander at farm and you know what with a move like that he deserves second place fantastic driving that was from David Watson and he's into P2 so great stuff there he just carried the speed through the corner and uh, Daniel Lana must have thought he had that one covered because generally speaking I mean it's hard to overtake up the inside of Abbey let alone around the outside but Watson just has such an excess of speed at this stage of the race that really there was very little that Daniel Lana could do to stop him so new order then it's now uh, David Watson in second Lana down to third Chapman fourth and Paul Smith fifth so these longer races in the uh, endurance financial RGB sports 1000 championship races this year are really really throwing an extra strategic element into the races and into the championship as well and it's providing lots of entertaining racing as well you can be sometimes fooled into thinking that the the longer a race is the less entertaining it will be but that's not the case at all it's just that there's a bit more thinking a bit more thought has to go into how to win these races not just with the setup but also the driving style you can't overwork the tyres early on because they'll get far too hot through the second half of the race some drivers clearly managing that better than others. Right, what about Colin Chapman now? Has he got the pace to go after Daniel Lada in the second half of the race? The Mattels do seem to be struggling a bit through the second half of the race. And Daniel Lada is definitely being caught here by Colin Chapman. There's Chapman drops down the hill. And again, you see there, Lada doesn't make friends with the apex at Chapel. So well, I think we could, we could be seeing here that the Mattels, whilst very quick, over short distances, maybe in this uh, this slightly longer second race, they're just struggling a bit. They're definitely not as quick now, comparatively, as they were in the first race of the day. I don't think anybody's going to catch Christopher Wesmail. He's often up the road, but uh, for the podium positions, they may it may be all Spire, because we've got a Spire in second place and a Spire in fourth place that's catching the Mattel in third. That through club goes Watson on his way to what's going to be one of his best results of the season. Great race this has been from the uh, the number two car. It's a shame for his teammate, Billy Olmo, that he can't be out there scoring some good points as well, but uh, he's uh, made the championship interesting because although Paul Smith maybe isn't going to maximise this opportunity with a race victory or maybe even not on, on the podium, he is at least going to take some points out of Billy for what looks like being a fifth place finish. So um, it can happen in the final three rounds of the championship with a mistake there from Daniel Lana, and that's all the opportunity that... Uh, that uh, Colin Chapman needed to get alongside. Can't complete the manoeuvre yet though, but we saw early on that Chapman is very, very good into the corners. And again, Lana runs wide through Chapel. Daniel's making more mistakes here as the race goes on. It's only a matter of time, I think, before Colin Chapman finds his way through. Even with a slipstream though, down the back straight. Look at that, Mattel is getting away. But every time we get anywhere near a corner, it seems that uh, Daniel Lana, the man who finished uh, the first race in third position, 
really struggling. Look at the car dancing at ever more spectacular angles through the corner. It's great to watch, but it is not the fastest way through the turn. And Colin Chapman will be loving what he's seeing here because provided he can find a way through cleanly without getting caught up too much with Daniel Lana, he could be on for a podium finish. Paul Smith has been caught by Mark Betts as well. So Paul um, in this fifth position is not secure at all. He could lose another position here to Mark Betts before the end of the race. Have to see what happens over the remaining handful of laps as they go back in towards Abbey Corner once again. And up towards the left hand farm, flat out through there easily in these cars now. What about this fight for third? This is part of the circuit where Lard has been struggling when he gets the apex this time through Village. Colin Chapman, therefore, is not going to be able to be alongside it towards Chapel. But this court has been troublesome for uh, Lana as well of late. No, he hangs on. Paul Smith, though, having to go at, um, ever more defensive to keep Mark Betts at bay. <coughs> Mark Betts, we well, can't even see him because he's fitting perfectly behind the silhouette of Paul Smith's fourth place car, sorry, fifth place car, excuse me, as he runs down the hangar straight. Now he pulls to the outside line. Smith defending the inside. That could give Betts the run out of the turn to maybe attack down towards Vale. Daniel Lana now starting to stretch his legs again, pulling back away from Colin Chapman ever so slightly their fight for the final step of the podium, but this fight for fifth place, very close. Less than a car length now separates the Mattel from the Spire. And the number 14 car, race one winner, runaway race one winner, Paul Smith, clearly struggling in this race. It's just not quite going to plan. He really could too in the top five finish here, though if he drops another place, that could be a real missed opportunity as far as the championship is concerned. Through Abbey to another lap they go, but the lap's winding down now. There is uh, David Watson in second, and then there the fight for third place, there the fight for fifth place, and Paul Smith runs out wide, and this is Mark Betts' opportunity. Tries to draw alongside on the run down the hill. He is alongside, he's on the inside line as well, and Mark Betts gets it. Brilliant driving from Mark, and he's now into the top five. Well, watch out for the straight line speed, though, of the Mattel of Paul Smith. He's coming back at him down the straight. How hard is Paul Smith going to fight this? He knows that every point is going to count this year, and uh, he really could do with getting back ahead of Mark Betts. He's on the outside line towards Stone. So, if he can go right round the outside, he gets the inside line for Vale. In fact, he's already done it, so uh, Paul Smith is able to find a way back through. But it's only a matter of time, surely, before Mark Betts starts to uh, relaunch the attack. And breaking into Vale again. And uh, back through to end another lap. And <laughs> Ken Smith really sliding around, coming out of club. And out across the start-finish line. Down across the damp patches on the uh, pit straight they go, but the racing line, as I said, since the start of the race really has been pretty much bone dry. It's certainly dry by now. It's only really when you go offline, which of course you have to, to try and overtake or defend. And that's when it starts getting a bit more treacherous. David Watson, though, the only people he's overtaking now are back markers because he's some 30 seconds behind the um, race leader, Christopher Wesmail, who we really haven't seen much of in this race, but he just checked out for the word go and hasn't been seen since. What is going to happen in the fight for third and then the fight for fifth, though? That's where most of the entertainment is. The other two Mattels, front running Mattels at least, um, in the race are well and truly in the thick of their own battles. Both trying to defend from arguably quicker cars at this stage of the race, the two Spires. Mark Betts having briefly been ahead of Paul Smith just over a lap ago. Where is he going to find another way through? I suppose his best bet still is to try and make a mistake out of, uh, sorry, try and force a mistake, excuse me, out of the car in front. The same goes for Colin Chapman here, who continues to apply the pressure to Daniel Lana. Daniel not really putting a foot wrong through this uh, final third of the race so far. We are now into the final three or four minutes of the race. Uh, and this a very entertaining second uh, insurance financial RGB Sport 1000 Championship race at Silverstone. National Circuit once again, producing lots of overtaking opportunities, lots of close racing, and in this longer feature race, lots of interesting tyre strategies as well, and again, Daniel Lana is wayward under braking into Village, and then sideways off the corner as well. Side by side, are we for fifth? Not quite. Mark Betts looking to try and get that inside line again, down to Chapel, where he made the move a lap or so ago on Paul Smith, who, once again, runs wide out of the left-hander, but then we know the Mattel has the advantage in a straight line, so he can afford to come off that corner less than perfectly and still hold the position down the hangar straight. A marker is Phil Hutchins, gets out of the way of the third-place battle, which works its way through. 
back down into the Vale. We are on the final lap of the race though now, and Christopher Wesemail, this is the first we've seen of him really since the start of the race, but he has built up nearly a 35 second cushion over the rest of the field. It's been a truly dominant performance. This is, is I think I'm right in saying, quite comfortably the biggest winning margin that we've seen all year long. Yes, the previous biggest was 12 seconds in race two at Pembrey when Paul Smith beat Billy Olmo to the race victory. Well, here it is Paul Smith's teammate, Christopher Wesemail, who is in even more dominant fashion. Had the first half of the season worked out better for Christopher, he definitely would have been a championship contender. As it is, he's out to score as many race wins as possible and he scores one here at Silverstone. Across the line he goes, the first of the season for Christopher Wesemail. And what a way to do it by over half a minute it over his nearest rivals. Great stuff from Christopher. A lonely race, but he won't mind too much because he takes his first victory in the championship. Well, he takes the win, but what's going on behind? Well, I can tell you that in second position, it was David Watson ahead of Daniel Lana, who held on to third from Colin Chapman, whilst Paul Smith, likewise, held on to fourth ahead of Mark Betts. Then it was James Walker, Stephen Dean, Jonathan McGill and Colin Spicer to round out the top ten, ahead of Phil Hutchins and Drew Faulkner. Ryan Yarrow, Danny Andrew, Tim Hoverd, Billy Olbone, another non-finish for him, and Charlie Thomas, a non-starter. Chippy. Um... We had rain earlier on, um, so the tyre choice was crucial and it paid off for you, well done. Yeah, I mean, the team made an excellent choice, we went with the dries, went full dry setup, complete punt, a bit of it. Um, I know the other car was on wets and got a great start and made a, made a gap from there, really. Yeah, and you maintain that gap uh, all the way through the race, you had quite a lead at the end. Yeah, I mean, from about from about lap 10, we're playing it a bit safe, just making sure that didn't do anything silly around some back markers. The team, Scott Mattel, Mattel cars, an excellent job this weekend. The car's been so easy to drive, and I, I couldn't, couldn't be happier. And good points for the championship. Yeah, abs absolutely. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, Dave, um, first outing, first podium. Well done. Thank you. Uh, talk us through it. Uh, setup was crucial during that race. Yeah, so it was a, a last minute call just before we got called to the assembly area as to whether it was going to be a, a wet or a dry setup. But, Looking over the pit wall, it looked like there was a drying line uh, on the circuit. So, um, yeah, just decided to go for, for the dry setup. And uh, what have you thought of the championship so far? Yeah, it's fantastic. So, um, obviously, I've had most of this year out. Uh, I was racing Class F last year. So, first time back in a car this weekend and uh, first time driving in anger in nearly 12 months. <laughs> so, yeah, enjoyed it. Oh, well, for now, go and enjoy it. Well done. Thank you very much. Dan, there we are again, third place. Um, Tougher race than yesterday, uh, tricky conditions, so to come away with the points, you've got to be happy. Yeah, yeah, I had a really bad start today, um, not as good as yesterday, so I dropped back a few places. Um, and then, yeah, just trying to uh, play the gamble, I went on wet tyres. Uh, I think most of the cars, apart from my other teammate Paul, were on, uh, on dries, so they were okay to start, but they just started going off, so I was just defending and going backwards through the race. Yeah, how quickly did they last before uh, you start, start noticing them going off? Um, a few laps. <laughs> they, they were just, they were really loose um, all the way through the race, really. They, they came in halfway through the race. They were okay, just moving around on the blocks. But uh, toward the end of the race, I was really struggling. My lap times were just dropping off and off. And that's uh, when I started to get challenged from behind a few times. Yeah, so, so you're praying for the uh, checker flag, were you? Yeah, I was literally watching my countdown timer, <laughs> praying for that flag. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, it was good. It was exciting to have to challenge and have to uh, defend as well. All right, well, uh, it's a podium that counts. Well done. Yeah, thank you.